Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Welcome to the um, Ikna ILF um, Quran webinar series. Um, this week, inshallah, we'll be studying Surah Yunus, verses 31 to 36. Uh, and the focus, uh, or the theme rather, um, this week will be evidence for Tawheed and guidance. The webinar, inshallah, will be delivered by Sheikh Maulid, and inshallah, I'll pass over to him. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. InshaAllah ta'ala, today or tonight, we'll be focusing on a few ayat from the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in different ayat in, 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 in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That indeed, O people, قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِضَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ That indeed it has come to you a maw'idha, an advice from your Lord. وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ And that which is a cure and a healing for that which is in your chest. وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ And the Qur'an is a guidance and it's a mercy for the believing people. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we will look into some of the ayat I'm going to recite. And this ayat from Surah to Yunus, from ayat 31 to 36, inshallah ta'ala. And then we'll go over the meaning of this ayat. We will do some tadabbur, reflections, and contemplations over the meaning of this ayat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل من يرزقكم من السماء والأرض أم من يملك السمع والأبصار ومن يخرج الحي من الميت وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقُّ فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ فَأَنَّا تُصْرَفُونَ كذلك حقت كلمة ربك على الذين فسقوا أنهم لا يؤمنون قل هل من شركائكم من يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده قل الله يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده فأنا تؤفكون قل هل من شركائكم من يهدي إلى الحق قل الله يهدي للحق أفمن يهدي إلى الحق أحق أن يتبع أما لا يهدي إلا أن يهدى فما لكم كيف تحكمون وما يتبع أكثرهم إلا ظنا إن الظن لا يغني من الحق شيئا إن الله عليم بما يفعلون الحمد لله سورة يونس just to give you a context on this سورة it has the title of one of the names of the, of the Prophet, Prophet Yunus. 
And this surah is actually a surah that builds the iman and the faith of the believer. Because Allah mentions at the end of this surah, a whole nation that embraced faith and Islam in the time of Yunus. If you look at the Quran, most of the times, prophets, when they come, they actually have people who are following and people who are opposing the message. But the people of Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the end of this surah that, this, this, that the people of Yunus have accepted Iman, all of them. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ فَنَفَعَهَا إِمَانُهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُونُسَ لَمَّا آمَنُوا Allah says that the people of فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ If there was a village or a town or a people آمَنَتْ that have accepted فَنَفَعَتْ إِمَانُهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُونُسَ Except the people of Yunus That this, the beginning of the ayah, it's an encouragement for you know, nations to accept Iman. Then Allah mentions the people of Yunus, they all accepted Islam. Surah Al-Safat, Allah tells us, وَأَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَى مِئَةِ أَلْفٍ أَوْ يَزِيدُونَ That the people who followed Yunus were hundred thousands, أَوْ يَزِيدُونَ or even more than hundred thousands. So the story of Yunus is very unique and is very significant, especially in the Surah of Yunus. The ayat that we're about to study tonight, first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, Qul. Every time you hear the word Qul in the Quran, it means say. It's an order. What comes after that is very important. Allah says, Qul, say, or tell our Prophet. Tell the people who are listening. Tell the people who are listening, those who are believing and those who are rejecting, all of them, tell them. Man min as wal arud. Tell them who's giving you the risk, who's providing for you from the heavens and from the earth. Man min as wal arud. If you look at the human beings, you know, sustenance of risk. It's something that nobody can ignore. When we come into this life, we all need risk. We all need a place to stay. We need to be in a place that we have, we feel you know, dignified and honored. We need to eat. Those are the necessary stuff. It doesn't change from the beginning of the creation today until today. Of course, people have different kinds of foods but the necessity is the same. People need to eat. It doesn't matter what they want to eat, what they want to drink, but that necessity of risk, that necessity of having risk and sustenance and providence, it is something that is necessary in our lives as human beings, as well as every creation. But this is specific to us. Allah is telling the Prophet, tell them, you wake up in the morning, you're healthy, you acquire wealth, you go for your businesses, you do all of this. The water comes from the top, from the sky, the rain, you know, you produce uh, all kinds of different foods. Who provides this for you from the heaven, from the sky, and from the earth? And then ask them, who gives you the power of hearing? and the ability to see. You know, a lot of times, especially nowadays where people attribute everything to just, you know, by accident or just by natural thing, or they say this is just the laws of nature. But Allah is challenging everything. Look at yourself, look at your eyes. You know, it cannot be by coincidence. Look at your hearings. Who gave you this? Who gave you the power to hear? who give you the power to listen and to see what absara means the sight. And ask them, who brings the living out of the dead? And this actually requires an explanation. يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ 
من الميت that ask them who brings the living out of the dead that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the names of Allah is Al-Fatir the name of Al-Fatir the function of that name the role of that name within the names of Allah is that Allah initiates something out of nothing so it brings from no, that will come to the later on. But the first one is who brings the living out of the dead. It's yeah, That example actually goes here. It means Father Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the living out of mayit, out of nothing. Inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. Allah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cleaver that cracks and splits the seeds Allah cracks and he brings the splits and he brings the daylight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the darkness to bring forth isbah, light so in this ayah who brings the living out of the dead and then and who brings the dead out of the living. This ayah also, some of the ulama mentions that it refers to sometimes you find that someone who is spiritually alive, a believer, is coming outside of someone who is not a believer. Like the Sahaba, for example, you know, their fathers, they were not believers, they were mostly a polytheist or mushrikun, they were worshipping idols. Especially the older Sahaba, their, their parents or their, 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 their fathers, especially in Makkah time. But then you look at their progeny, their children, their ahya. They are alive, they're living people. Not only clinically or physically, but also spiritually. is someone You see, it is on the, the opposite. Sometimes it is the father who is mayit and then the child, or it could be on the other side. You see, وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ That a father is a righteous, a believer, but his progeny is not spiritually alive. You see, we have the story of Nuh, for example, when he was telling his son, come, يَا بُنَيَّرْ كَمْ معنا. Come embark, you know, come with us. You know, join us, be among the believers. You see, and 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 many other examples where the father or the mother is, you know, a believer, and she or he is calling her son or her daughter to become a, a believer. There is Subhanallah a beautiful verse in Surah uh, Surah Al Ahqaf. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَالَّذِي قَالَ لِوَالِدَيْهِ أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا أَتَعِدَانِنِي أَنْ أُخْرَجْ وَقَدْ خَلَتِ الْقُرُونُ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَهُمَا يَسْتَغِيثَانِ اللَّهِ وَيْلَكَ آمِنْ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ فَيَقُولُ مَا هَذَا إِلَّا أَسَطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Allah says, remember the one, the one who is saying to his walidain, he's saying this to his mom and his dad, أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا أُفْ to you, أَتَعِدَانِنِي أَنْ أُخْرَجْ You're promising that I will be resurrected. وَقَدْ خَلَتِ الْقُرُونُ مِنْ قَبْلِ Many generations have passed before me. Min qabli. But then Allah mentions the source of confidence and the strength that these parents have is the dua. They're saying, Wahuma they're talking to their child while seeking Allah's help. What do you believe in Indeed, the promise of Allah is the truth. So that is Yukhrijul Hayy min al Mayit wa Yukhrijul Mayyita min al Hayy. Then the third question is, وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Ask them, وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Who carries out, you know, the judgments? Who arranges everything? Who governs this world? Everything that we see, whether it's small or big. كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَانِ Allah creates every moment, every time. Allah's work is prevalent in everything that we do, in our actions and also in the afaq, on the horizons, and in the universe. Then Allah says, the fitra will speak. 
the fitra would say the fitra is the ability you know to recognize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's that fitra that that speaks to us you see Allah says فَسَيَقُولُونَ Allah they will say Allah they know that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah say فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ so say to them then why is that why is that you're not protecting yourself why is that you're not having taqwa of Allah why is that you're worshipping idols why is that you're associating you know you're committing shirk and you're associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the next ayah ayah 32 فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ Allah says for that ذَلِكُمْ is a ishara it refers to something It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord, the truth, al-haq. One of the names of Allah is al-haq. It actually means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth, doesn't change. Truth, al-haq, alladhi la yatagayyar. The truth that is unchangeable. Thalika bi anna Allah wa al-haq in another ayah. Then Allah says, فَمَادَ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ Then what can be beyond truth except error? If you're not following the truth, you're actually following error and misguidance. You see, فَأَنَّ تُسْرَفُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then how are you averted? How are you turning away from, from the truth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ayah 33, كَذَلِكَ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ فَسَقُوا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That, Therefore, or thus, the word of your Lord has come into effect upon those who disobey, that they will not believe. The sunnah, the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates, we need to understand this ayah. It actually means that the system of Allah, the killing of Allah that's written in the law al mahfud necessitates that if you actually become a fasiq, if you actually follow your passions and your desires, then you won't believe. Then you will not believe. This ayah is not actually saying that, oh, you don't have any choice and you don't actually play a role in deciding and doing what's right for you. It doesn't mean that, you know, your fisk is already preordained. It means the kingdom of Allah necessitates that whoever follows the path of the fusa those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who follow their own ego and nafs and desires, the kalim of Allah necessitates that those people will not believe because they are not willing to believe. They're putting the priority for their own ambitions and what so forth. And no la yu'minun. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, uh, tells the Prophet, ask them, قُلْ هَلْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِكُمْ مَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ Now, the topic is the truth, haqq. You see, we're now living in a society where seeking the truth is becoming almost irrelevant. There is actually a, a dictionary, Oxford Dictionary, back in 2016, they had a new word that came into the dictionary. And that word says, post-truth, P-O-S-T, truth. Post-truth means that this is the era where people don't really care about truth anymore. You can lie, you can manipulate the situation, you can do whatever you want to do, you can just talk to your you know, constituencies or your audiences, you can tell them all kinds of lies, and it's still nobody would actually tell if you're telling the truth or not. Or even maybe they know that you're not telling the truth, but it's still they're following you, they're voting for you, they follow you. Why? Because the haq and the truth and be, having that integrity is disappearing from the society. It is a moral decadence, actually, that we were seeing. It. You see, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating in the Quran in many verses, and especially here, that the haqq is very important. You see, that ayah is Qul hal min shuraka'ikum man yahdi ilal haqq. Or before that, I skip the ayah, ayah 34, we'll come back to ayah yahdi ilal haqq. So ayah 34, Allah says, Qul hal min shuraka'ikum man yahdi ilal haqq. Say, are there any among those you associate with Allah who can create, who can initiate creation, who can initiate creation and then return it, 
to its essence ثم يعيد then tell them قل الله يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيد tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who initiates the creation ثم يعيد and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will eventually then return the creation to its essence فأنا تؤفكون then Allah says ask them how are you deluded if you know this then how is that you're not worshipping Allah and you're not following the tawheed that is required then ayah 35 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ هَلْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِكُمْ مَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ This is the truth. Especially nowadays, the Muslims who are living in the West, a lot of times, you know, we think about, you know, the truth, and we think about battle. A lot of falsehood, a lot of lies, a lot of people following their own ambitions. People can create false things. Even in the age of technology, people can create false ideas, false identities, false videos. So this is the time to really focus on this ayah and understand what truly, you know, what it means. Allah says, قُلْ هَلْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِكُمْ مَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ Say, are there... مَنْ مَهَلْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِكُمْ Say, who among your shuraka, your associates, who can guide to the truth? In the Arabic language, there's something called balagha, which is sometimes hadith, the question is, is being proposed, but the answer is, is hidden. So it is the mind of the reader, you have to come up with the answer. And this is a, a style that the Quran uses so that a person who's listening can engage with the Quran. So Allah says, tell them or ask them, who among you, among your associates can guide to the truth. Of course, you know, idols that cannot, you know, talk, cannot benefit or harm, they cannot guide to the truth. Then Allah says, tell them, Allahu yahdi ila al-haqq, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah guides to the truth. Yahdi, in the Arabic language, it's a fi'il mudar. It shows, yani, it's a present tense, but it's also, it shows consistency. That it's something that's happening now and it will happen in the future. It's something that's continuing. Yahdi ila al haqq. That it is Allah who guides to the truth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the people that if you really want to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only way you can come to Allah is through the haqq and following the truth. There is nothing who can guide you to the truth. Anything else when it comes to seeking the truth, they're all inadequate. You look at the people who are the most richest people, those who have the degrees, those who have all kinds of different things, nobody can actually answer the big questions. So this is the haqq that Allah says, is anyone over there? Not only in the time of the idols, but even in this, to this day. Not the politicians, not the kings, not the governors, not the people who have PhDs. When it comes to the haqq, it is something that comes from the revelation from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the hearts of the, the people who are accepting the truth. And that is the way that Allah guides to the truth. So now we think about the intellect. Of course, you know, the aql, and we use the aql. And Allah tells us to use the aql. But what is the use of reason if the, use, the reason has no heart that is loving? You know, in Islam, we have aqlun yufakkir wa qalbun yuhib. We have an intellect that is thinking, but also a qalb that has a feeling, a qalb that's a longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Afaman yahdi ila al-haqq, Allah says, Afaman yahdi ila al-haqq, a haqq an yuttaba, amman la yahdi illa an yuhda. So ask them, who is more worthy of following, of being followed? One who guides to the truth. One who guides to the truth, okay, or one who is inadequate to find the truth for himself. That's why a lot of times we say, Yahdillahu man yasha, it is Allah who guides whomever he wants. You and I, we can show people the, tr the truth, but even if you have children, you cannot guide them to the truth. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can be the means, but it's, at the end, it is Allah who opens the hearts of the people who are following the guidance. 
أفمن يهدي إلى الحق أحق أن يتبع أما لا يهدي إلا أيوده So here is the question You think about two people The comparison here is Who is Who is more worthy of being followed One who guides to the truth Okay And one who is inadequate to find the truth for himself. Of course, the one who guides the truth is, you know, is more worthy of being followed. Then Allah says, فَمَعَلَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Then what's wrong with you? How do you judge? How do you, what is, what's wrong with you? And that's why a lot of times, people, until now, people who reject revelation, those who say that it's only this material world, and they try to, you know, mock and make fun of the believers. When you really talk to them, they think they're using reason. But when you look at their hukma and how they judge, it's ridiculous. And this is how the Qur'an is presenting to us, all of these questions. And this is a way that the Qur'an provokes the fitrah and the thinking of the believer who reads the Qur'an with their mind, but also with their heart, with their qalb. Inna fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalbun aw alqa sam'a wa shaheed. As Allah tells us, the Qur'an is talking to someone who is alive inside, someone who is present, aw alqa sam'a wa shaheed. The last ayah is وَمَا يَتَّبِعُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ إِلَّا ظَنَّا إِنَّ الظَّنَّ لَا يُكُنِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ شَيْئًا So, when it comes to the truth, this ayah, we have to understand the siyaq. The context of this ayah is that مَا يَتَّبِعُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ إِلَّا ظَنَّا It refers to the truth. A lot of people when they speculate, when they ask questions, most of the times Allah says, they follow their imaginations. I think, she thinks, he thinks. It's all about imaginations. Nobody has a definite answers to this. As far as the human beings is concerned. You see. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Inna la min al That assumptions will never substitute the truth. You know, or assumptions cannot replace the truth. It means that human beings will follow assumptions. But just you following your assumptions will, cannot replace the truth. The truth will stay there, whether you follow it by following Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following the people of the Iman and their path. If you follow that path, then it's the path of Ahl al-Haq. But if you follow your dhan, your assumptions, you know, you may live your life according to your own assumptions, but that assumptions cannot replace the truth. Inna dhanna la yughni min al-haq shay'a. And subhanallah, the conclusion of this ayah is amazing. Allah says, Inna Allah alimun bima yaf'alun. That no matter what you do, whether you follow the truth or you follow your own assumptions, Inna Allah alimun bima yaf'alun. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they do. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they do. There is another ayah, Allah says, Inna al-ladhina yulhiduna fi ayatina la yakhfawna alayna. أَفَمَنْ يُلْقَى فِي النَّارِ خَيْرٌ أَمْ مَنْ يَأْتِي آمِنًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ This is Surah Tufusilat. The Surah about the clarification. That Surah Allah says, those who want to change the ayat of Allah. They look at the ayat of Allah but they want to attribute that to something else. Allah says they are not hidden from Allah. Allah knows them. أَفَمَنْ يُلْقَى فِي النَّارِ خَيْرٌ أَمَّنْ يَأْتِي آمِنًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Is the one who's being thrown to the hellfire is better or the one who will come on the day of judgment آمِنًا in a state of safety? Then Allah says اِعْمَنُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ Do as you wish. Do as you wish. That is the exact meaning of this ayah. اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ Do as you wish. إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بُسِيرٌ Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what you do. And in this ayah Allah says إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing of what they do. Then I would like to add this ayah, inshallah ta'ala, then we'll finish the session, inshallah. This ayah, because we're supposed to go from one ayah, 30, 31 to 36, I'm not sure if the time is from 
uh, nine to uh, to ten or nine to nine thirty. I thought it was will be thirty minutes. The time is, um, you know, we want to try them now about uh, fifteen minutes for uh, Q and A. So if we could try and uh, wrap up in the next few minutes, then we'll have a few minutes for Q and A to finish by nine forty-five, inshallah. Oh, then that's fine. Then actually, I'm, I'm finished. Maybe inshallah next time I would because this ayah or my kind of Quran and iftar is is ayah that I thought I would have time to explain. But inshallah, we can use the the rest of the time for Q and A, inshallah. Okay, Jazakallah Karen. So, um, inshallah, we'll open up the floor for Q and A now. So, um, those on the webinar, please submit your questions in writing uh, through the questions tab uh, within the webinar. So, inshallah, the first question: uh, We've been talking about guidance to the truth, guidance to Islam, and this is something that we are most desperately in need of Allah's assistance to to guide us. Whether we are Muslim or whether we are non-Muslim, we may know this, we may not know this, but everybody is in need of, of Allah's guidance. But how can we stop ourselves from being complacent in how we go about asking Allah to help us to be guided? And how can we show to Allah that we are appreciating this great gift that he has given us? And many of the righteous people before us used to worry about dying in a state of misguidance. So what steps should we be following um, to best appreciate this guidance from Allah and to stay on the guidance? No, I, I think that's a good question. And uh, when it comes to appreciating the ni'mah of having hidayah and guidance, we have to understand that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa kafa biha min ni'mah uh, Praise be to Allah for the favor of being a Muslim of Islam and enough it is as a favor this is enough so following the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one way we can show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to say alhamdulillah and to know that ultimately the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not something that we take for for credit you know even if you're giving da'wah you're giving lectures you know or you're raising your children if you see them they become good Muslims you say mashallah this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course we do our part but we should always as Muslims, we should always remember that the ni'mah that we have necessitates gratitude and shukr. Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Allahumma ja'alni min al This is a dua that he used to say, Oh Allah, make me among the minority. Then one of the Sahaba asked him, Oh Amir al mumin or the, the leader of the believers, what do you mean by make me among the minority? And he said, Alam taqra qawl Allah ta'ala wa qalilu min ibadi al-shukur He said, haven't you recited the ayah in Surah al-Saba wa qalilu min ibadi al-shukur Only a few of my servants are truly grateful But he said that I want to be those small group that are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That's one way The second way is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a good end Now one way we can actually uh, maintain that good end because we have a good beginning. You know, always a good beginning. You know, doesn't mean that a person would have a good end. We have seen in real examples in life, a lot of brothers and sisters who were very active in the da'wah, but they started repeating the going backward. Allah Musta'an. You know, the matters of Iman, Allah says, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنِي تَقَدَّمَ وَلِيَ تَأَخْرَ They're not on the same level. You know, some people, they, they excel. You know, they go forward. And some people, they... They, they fall behind. But one way that we can ask Allah to keep us on the straight path is always to surround ourselves with good friends, with good company, that we can socialize with them. We can have a halaqa like this one, for example. You know, a circle halaqa that Ikna is doing 
every Wednesday. People may say that, well, this is just an hour of people come. Allah, this is one way of ensuring that this hidayah that Allah has given us, He stays with us till the end. Okay, so that is also one way, uh, encouraging the people to have good friends and good company and then purifying our hearts and seeking knowledge that if you have a, shubha, a misconception, if you have a question, you go to a learned person, you go to that person and ask, you seek for clarifications. If a shaitan puts anything into your mind, you say, Astaghfirullah, you say, Raditu Billahi Rabba wa Bil Islam Deena, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi wa Rasulah. You know, Imam al Nawi. Uh, in his book, Kitab al he mentions a very good statement, and I will conclude with this. He says that, Inna lisa la bayt al He says that a thief, a thief will not enter or will not aim you know, at an empty house. If a thief wants to steal, the thief will go to a house that's full of treasures or gold, so whatever it may be. You see, the same thing for shaitan. Shaitan is always whispering and giving us fast to the hearts of the believers because Satan knows that in the heart of the believer there is Iman, the most precious thing. That's why the resource of the Shaitan, the Prophet taught us to fight against and let the Yosu Sufis do it with us. So we're starting at that in the morning and in the evening and staying strong and asking and recognizing the Hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what will keep us on the right path and this is what will keep give us hopefully a good end, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. Inshallah, the next question. Non-Muslims sometimes tell us that when we talk about Islam being the truth, they argue with us and say that our argument is circular because we use the Quran to prove the existence of Allah. Can you comment on this? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Malid. Can you hear us? Yep. I, I can hear you now, but I it was there was a moment of silence. I don't know what happened. Okay, let's continue, inshallah. Did you get the question or shall I repeat it? I didn't hear anything. Okay. So sometimes non-Muslims tell us that our argument that Islam is the truth is a circular argument because we are using the Quran to prove the existence of Allah. Can you comment on this? Can you repeat the question? Sometimes non-Muslims tell us that our argument that Islam is the truth is circular because we are using the Quran to prove the existence of Allah. Can you comment on this? Uh, Is it appropriate to use the Quran to prove the existence of Allah? Okay. The Quran, if, if, we, if we have the right approach to the Quran, we really understand that it is the Quran speaks to the fitrah it speaks to the fitrah of the human beings and the Quran mentions that each and every human being has that fitrah that longing that capacity to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the Muslims of course we use the Quran to prove, uh, to prove the, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Quran gives us the method 
and the way of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be known. So there are two ways we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the creation of Allah looking at the universe and asking the questions of where did this come from? You know, this cannot be by coincidence. This whole precise system that there is no discrepancy, it has to have a design, it has to have a creator and a maker. That is when we look at the universe. When we look into the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the human being, talks to the fitrah, that this is the covenant that you took. You came from Adam. This is your identity. This is who you are as a, as a human being. You were created for Jannah. Your goal is Jannah. وَأَنَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَهَىٰ وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَضْحَكَ وَأَبْكَىٰ So the Qur'an actually revives the fitrah that is imposing the fitrah that in other words that people have deviated from. Like when Allah talks about the ayah that we just mentioned all of these ayat, everybody knows that when it comes to the universe unless a person's fitrah has been corrupted, everybody knows that this is happening by you know, the power and the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, so we use the Qur'an you know, to prove the existence of Allah because the Qur'an gives us the method and the manhaj of knowing who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. In the verses that we've studied, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about bringing the dead out of the living, and bringing the living out of the dead. What does this actually mean? And you, you talked a little bit about um, plants coming out of the soil. Um, but what are the broader possibilities of what these two terms mean? Dead out of the living and living out of the dead. Does it also refer to human beings being re resurrected? Yes, it, you know, the. This ayah has, it has a broader meaning, you know, one of the meanings is that, you know, as I mentioned, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ You know, it refers to, uh, uh, it refers to, you know, bringing the living out of, you know, bringing the living out of al-mayyit, which means the dead, or bringing the, the, the living or bringing the dead out of the living. It actually means that, as I mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is father. Allah creates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates something that is dead, nothing. Allah is a the father. Creates. So that is bringing something out of nothing. So that is what we mean. It talks about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah talks about human beings. Allah created Adam from Adam. But then, on the day of judgment, there is a day of resurrection. So we actually become a hayah, we become, you know, Allah brings the living, meaning the day of resurrection, Allah brings life back into the dead bodies. So that is one, one meaning. Another meaning is, some of the ulama said, it refers to uh, following the haq and the truth. But sometimes you might find uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the hidayah to the child, but not to the father. So the child, who is spiritually alive is coming from the father who is dead. And this dead doesn't mean clinically he's dead, but it means he's spiritually empty and dead. Vice versa, on the other hand, is that, you know, the, the father, the, the, the father is, is alive, has the Iman, is spiritually strong, but then the child is dead. That is also another meaning. If we take the ayat it's all in its totality, it meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a qadir over all things, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing all things, whether that be through the human beings, you know, bring giving hidayah, you know, uh, uh, or refers to uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the universe, bringing a dead thing in, into a life, and then something that was dead, for example, bringing that back into a life, like Allah creates in the beginning and then returns into, you know, into its essence in the second time. That is also another meaning. And Allah knows best. 
Jazakallah, Kara. Um, we'll make this the last question, inshallah. Um, one of the um, participants is asking, it seems to me that as I get closer to the truth, or the more I'm guided, it becomes harder to endure the ignorance and hypocrisy of others. How can getting closer to my faith be possible while still keeping peace between myself and those around me? Yeah. You know, it's, it could be the, yeah, I mean, a believer is someone, of course, who is strong, who stands up for, you know, the principles and the values that, you know, he or she believes in. But at the same time, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, a believer who is, you know, patient, who is with the people, although they're annoying, although they're, you know, there's some kind of hypocrisy or whatever it may be, a believer who is with them, telling them the, you know, the, the haq and the truth, you know, promoting the good among those people and forbidding the evil. That type of believer is better than one who is isolated himself or herself from the group. So I would say, don't isolate yourself, don't leave the people, but let your actions be the role model for them. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. Um, with that, we will conclude, inshallah, and we'll um, resume these sessions, inshallah, same time, 9 to 9.45 next week, inshallah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruku wa atubu alayk, awadhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, wa la asr, inna l-insana la fi khus, illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu s-salihat, wa tawasaw bil haq, وتواصل بالصبر صدق الله الذي السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته